Okay, Dan, take it away. All right. Good evening, and thank you for viewing the July 14th, 2020 meeting of the Arcata Planning Commission. Um, as you know, the Planning Commission meeting is being held via teleconference in response to local efforts to reduce the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Before we start, I want to thank the community for their efforts to practice social distancing. Social distancing and self-isolation are the most effective and practical ways to slow the spread of the virus and increase best outcomes for our medical system. As the number of in individuals testing positive for the virus increases, it becomes more important that we adhere to strong sanitary practices of staying home, washing our hands and surfaces, and staying different, distant from those outside our immediate social units. In addition, the Humboldt County Health Officers has issued an order requiring the use of face coverings for any indoor facility an enclosed space or outdoor space where social distancing of at least six feet is impractical. Remember, you are covering your face to protect others who are vulnerable and most at risk. A few teleconferencing items before we start. First and most important, if you are not actively speaking, please mute your microphone. The meeting will be difficult to hear if microphones are not muted except for the individual speaking. Second, deliberations and questions will be conducted by roll call. The liaison will manage deliberations. Please raise your hand electronically using the teleconference function if you would like to speak. I may call roll call uh, for last comments. Third, all votes will be taken through roll call vote. Please answer A or nay when your name is called. Last public comment is being accepted by email. The email address is pc at cityofarcata.org. PC is short for public comment. Emails are accepted for both specific agenda items and general comments. Comments of specific agenda items will be raised by, read by staff during that agenda item. Public can email additional public comments now to be read and to be recorded as part of this meeting. So with that, we will call this uh, July 14th, 2020 Planning Commission meeting to order. Can we begin with a roll call? Chair Tagney? Here. Vice Chair Mayor? Here. Commissioner Davies? Here. Commissioner Figueroa? Present. Uh, Commissioner Vasade Elcock? Here. And Commissioner Barstow? Here. And Commissioner White? Here. All present. You're still muted, uh, Chair Tagney. I'm sorry. Sorry, folks. Uh, we are joined this evening by city staff members David Loya, Community Development Director, and Senior Planner Joe Matier. Um, we will move on now to oral communications. Mr. Loya, have you received any communications? You're muted. We've not received any uh, general oral communications. Okay. There are some, there are some comments uh, on the project that you'll be reviewing tonight. Okay. Uh, now we can move on to our consent calendar. And the only item on our consent calendar is the uh, minutes from our last meeting. Do we have any corrections or a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? Commissioner Mayor? I'll make a motion. Oh, okay. I was also going to make a motion to approve um, the consent calendar. 
Do we have a second? Julie? I'll second. I'll second. Second. Okay, we have a motion in three seconds. <laughs> uh, and now, David, are you going to conduct a roll call vote? Sure, I'll do the roll call. Uh, Chair Tagney? Uh, yes, aye. Uh, Vice Chair Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Visay Delcock? Yes. Commissioner uh, Figueroa? Aye. Commissioner Davies? Aye. Commissioner Barstow? Aye. And Commissioner White? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we're done with the consent calendar and now we can move on to our public hearing item. Um, we have um, the consideration for approving the Redwood Coast Montessori use permit and coastal development permit at 793 K Street. Can we begin with a staff report, please? Yes, thank you. My name is Joe Matier, senior planner with the city of Arcata, and the assigned planner for this project. Before the planning commission this evening is a use permit application and coastal development application for the development of a charter school at the former Ten Pin building. It's uh, David, do you have the slide PowerPoint presentation? Cool. Get some graphics put up for you. The planning staff is recommending that the planning commission. Uh, Can I interrupt? Yes, is that Commissioner? Hey, Joe. Yes. Go ahead, Julie. I think he hears you. I need to recuse myself from this. My husband. Um, this did a little bit of work on this project, so I need to recuse myself from this. Okay, thank you, Julie. I, and I don't know how to do it through Zoom. What do I, what do I do? How do I go away and come back, or how do I do this? Yeah, so Julie, what I would recommend is that you um, that you drop off the call, and then I will text you when we're done with this item, and then you can um, phone back in. Okay. Next slide, please. So the uh, planning staff is recommending that the planning commission uh, approve this project by adopting the action that you'll find is attachment A. Attachment A includes uh, three exhibits. Exhibit one would be the findings of approval. Uh, exhibit two is conditions of approval. And then exhibit three is the proposed project, um, the planned project description and elevation. Um, can we go to the third slide, please? The property is located uh, in the city of Arcadia. It's uh, indicated by the red um, uh, rectangle in the, in the picture there. It's two properties. The properties are both owned and operated by uh, or owned by. Um, Tom Parrott, who has uh, signed the application for the Redwood Coast uh, Monetary School. The blue line that you'll see to that uh, um, image is the coastal zone. So the coastal zone is uh, the southern part of the property that, um, of the line there that includes the proposed location for the Redwood Coast Monetary School. So just right across the street, you'll note across 8th Street, uh, that is inland, so you can throw a stone and, and be on the inland part or uh, be on the, the subject property and be in the coastal zone. The kind of the green line is the southern aspects of the Creamery District. And I point these out for several reasons um, that we'll get into later in the presentation. I do also want to locate the, um, the Bay Trail, the Arcata portion of the Rails with Trails, um, uh, Humboldt Bay Trail which is located along uh, L Street, and that is kind of the more uh, fuchsia color that is running uh, north and south on your line there. So the project is really located uh, conveniently to um, access that Humboldt Bay Trail. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, the, the project is located uh, on the former 10-pin building. It's about 10,600 square feet. 
that would be the um, property that's associated with assessor parcel uh, 021-156-007. Uh, that is mainly, you know, it's one large building. Uh, the interior is uh, does have some interior spaces of offices. There's a, a small kitchen area in there. The proposed project would do some interior improvements on that to create additional office spaces and also the um, classrooms for it. So it really will be uh, minimal tenant improvements from the perspective of, you know, there's no addition occurring uh, with the expansion of the building footprint or anything like that, but mainly interior remodels to create uh, additional office spaces and classrooms. So it does, uh, according to the director of the, the program, really lend itself to kind of adapting for the proposed use. There are some exterior improvements that are gonna occur on the building, and those would be mainly re related to uh, some new additional windows that let in natural lighting. When they do create those, uh, those, uh, those uh, classrooms, you do see on this air photo in that exhibit that they do have some skylights there, but they do want some additional uh, windows. And those windows would be compatible with the existing uh, windows for the structure. Uh, other exterior improvements are to improve accessibility. Um, and so they would be uh, manipulating or changing, modifying the parking lot and some of the, the ramps and uh, exit doors at the mainly the west side of the building uh, to accommodate for accessibility. Those improvements would require some uh, modifications to the landscaping. Um, you know, we, we do find that uh, when the 1010 building was originally modified from the indoor commercial recreation uh, bowling alley uh, to the office and light manufacturing business, uh, that they did do, uh, they had a landscape architect design the project, um, the landscaping there, and it's been well maintained uh, since that renovation has occurred. The property to the west, uh, where you do see the um, parking areas, that is also, I mentioned, owned by the, um, Tom Parrott, the property owner. And there's three existing uh, residential units there. And uh, the kind of a lighter gray area between those units, those would be, uh, there's some little parking spaces uh, that are dedicated to those units there. Uh, the, if you go to the next slide, please. This uh, shows kind of the pattern that was developed by for transportation and you know drop off for the, the students um, by the agent. And uh, they would travel along 7th Street uh, westbound and then take a uh, right on L Street uh, to uh, towards 8th Street. And staff would be able to go into the southern parking lot or some of the students if there is a driving ability and age. Uh, but that southern parking lot is dedicated to uh, the school and there are portions that are on the school property that are parking lot. There's an existing easement that does allow for the 10 pin building to have ingress and egress uh, access as well as parking. Uh, the agents did design a, a parking plan that would have dedicated parking for the residential units, as well as for the intended uh, uh, occupants of the school itself. There are additional overflow parking. So the, each of those two distinct uses would have dedicated parking, but then there would be some um, first come first serve that would be available to either uh, guests of the residential units or other users of the school project. The driveway to the north and the parking lot to the north is really designed as a one way uh, in out. So that is kind of the drop off zone for parents dropping off their students. They, there is some parking available as well there. Uh, some of the accessible parking would be located in both locations on the north parking lot and on the south parking lot as well. And so the flow would be for them to pull into that northern parking lot and then drop their students off and then exit onto 8th Street. So that is pretty much how the, the project is laid out. Um, the, the school is located, I mentioned, in the Creamery District, and that was established in 2015. And it was really a citizen-driven um, project. The Creamery District uh, encompasses uh, two different areas uh, that we adopted a, 
combining zone that would allow unique uses to the industrial limited zoning district. And some of those unique uses in, does include schools. And the intent back in 2015 was to try to create that artistic community and the synergy between the educational opportunities that uh, schools might provide and with the other artisans that would be working and uh, in the, the Creamery District itself. So the Creamery District uh, is located in both the coastal zone and the inland portion. We do recognize the land use code or the Creamery District We, as a citywide, we kind of adopted that as our most recent vision for the community in that neighborhood. Um, and again, that line for the coastal zone is just at 8th Street there. So um, just across to the north of the project site is in the inland portion. And uh, uh, then on the southern portion, of course, is the coastal zone. The um, Creamery District does have, a, as I mentioned, allow certain uses that typically wouldn't be allowed in industrial zoning districts. And it also has development standards, uh, unique setbacks and parking requirements, similar to the central commercial zoning district. So there is a little bit more of an idea of um, compact density, less emphasis on parking, more emphasis on the built environment and usable spaces for our public other than parking lot. Um, so I just wanna get into that a little bit. The uh, project did incorporate, it was really wonderful working with Greenway Partners, the agent for this project and their director of the Redwood Coast Montessori School, um, trying to um, really limit the single occupant vehicle arriving to this uh, site. Uh, as you will see in the staff report, there was uh, um, comments from the Caltrans through the referral process that identified uh, this as possibly a, a magnet school and drawing in students from outside the area. Uh, this is, school is an expansion of their existing elementary program that they operate offsite. And they were looking at um, continuing their program to the high school level. So this would be the next uh, logical step for those students that are currently in their program. Uh, I believe it's a Manila site. And so the agent did create a travel demand management uh, uh, provisions for this project that includes uh, carpooling, um, share ride, they, they do a pretty robust job on, on the carpooling. There's actually curriculum that they built into their school system, even at the elementary uh, school level that does talk about, uh, you know, bicycling, how to um, maintain bikes. Um, they did receive a grant uh, to for bicycles, so that is part of their program. As I mentioned, the Bay Trail is located right next door. Uh, they're within, I believe, a quarter mile of public transportation through the school bus system, or, I mean, through the Arcata public transportation system, and then the regional bus system as well. Uh, they incorporated different things like giving physical education credit for students that arrive by a uh, non-motorized vehicle. Uh, they will make accommodations for students and uh, staff arriving by public transportation if the bus is late, if the bus um, switch over to another um, route, you know, delays them. So they are really trying to accommodate, uh, you know, using the public transportation system, alternative modes of transportation uh, to limit, as I mentioned, the single occupant vehicle and also the vehicle miles traveled. So those are important uh, things to consider because uh, the state of California and of course the city of Arcata is interested in uh, not only our limiting our greenhouse gas impact, but also um, just our impact on our infrastructure and parking and streets is uh, due to the vehicles. Um, let me see, is there, we did receive uh, three comment letters uh, and those were included in your packet. Um, most of those, you know, all three of them were generally supportive of the project. One did have concerns about uh, parking and impacts of the school that they might have in that area. The project does meet the parking standards for the coastal land use and development guide. And it also would meet the parking standards for the citywide land use code as well. They do have uh, close to 30 parking spaces on site and uh, 
based on the size of the structure and the, the um, student use and the residences, uh, they are required to have, a, a, um, I can't recall, I'd have to look at the staff report, but it's over 30, but there is a credit for uh, mixed use development to when we have parking lots like that. So they were given a 25% credit for that, and that would put them under the um, tw at 29 parking spaces as required per the code, and they do have 30 parking spaces there. The project does include bicycle parking um, outdoors, and uh, they include state board parking. So as far as the students if arriving there, they're really trying to, for even employees, I shouldn't characterize and say that um, their staff isn't gonna arrive by state board, but they certainly could. Um, but they, the project does try to really promote that. Um, Let's see. And then one other item that has come up that I, I felt I just want to address is uh, the um, geologic. I know that uh, there might be some comments on that one. Um, there is a little bit, bit of ambiguity in the code, and uh, this, the staff did uh, write a condition of approval that would require the project meet the um, geologic hazard requirements of the land use code. That one is, uh, you know, um, a section that would be um, reviewed by at the time that the building permit was submitted. And so there is an exemption for some projects that would have uh, not much improvement value in this project. The, the site does kind of lend itself to that. It is, you know, um, uh, I know there's some language in the staff report that characterizes it as critical facility. That's just language from our um, hazard, geologic hazard matrix. Um, um, but we did want to include that condition of approval for them to address that. And you know, it is reviewable by the director, the zoning, I mean, uh, the community development director to the satisfaction of them. If the project does qualify for an exemption, they would certainly utilize that. Um, and I believe that maybe the agent has some other um, comments, particularly on that. Um, as far as uh, the project itself, this, the staff is recognizing this as a, a use that is certainly allowable in the land use code uh, through the Creamery District and the um, Industrial Limited II uh, combining zone for that project. Um, there is, a, as the staff report does get into, delve into the nitty gritties of uh, a code that's written in black and white. And when we look out that window, that's not a black and white world. So we really have to kind of uh, look at the, the issues here. And at that, I would go ahead and I know David is gonna be uh, presenting that aspect of the kind of other business that, through the Coastal Land Use and Development Guide. Um, other than that, I'd be happy to answer any questions now, or would you want to proceed to uh, the presentation by David? Uh, thank you, Joe. Are there any commissioner questions on that staff report? No, seeing none. Um, I'm just, we do, Judy, you have a question. I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Mayor, you have a uh, question? Yeah. Um, so in the staff report, tried to make clear that the only things that we're being asked um, to do today um, relate to that coastal development permit and um, the determination of whether a school is an other business uh, for the purpose of how we classify it. Um, and we're not really being asked to address anything other than that. Is that correct? Or are we looking at a broader issue? The reason I'm, I'm wondering is, is the timing of this is um, a little bit awkward considering that we are also tackling the Cave Street Corridor Pacific plan and we're right on the verge of being able to see a new draft local coastal program um, within presumably the next 
few weeks. So I'm just wondering if staff could um, address a little bit of the context and um, just, just sort of let us let us know where this where this project lies. I I understand that they may be trying to have the facility ready for when students go back to school um, for the coming term, if that actually happens. Um, but that, a little context would really help. The, um, the approval before you tonight is actually to approve the coastal development permit and the uh, use permit that's required in the existing Kludge. And so we are asking you to approve the project today. Um, and it is true that there are several other planning uh, documents that are ongoing that um, you know would affect this area as well. Um, in fact, uh, you know some of the uh, the interpretation that we're asking you to make tonight related to uh, the definitions and and the you know process uh, won't be an issue when we update our local coastal program. As Joe had mentioned, our uh, Kludge was adopted in 89, so we're working off a 30-year document, 30-year-old document, whereas our land use code, the uh, Creamery District, um, you know, which is a more recent statement of the community desire for that area, was adopted just five years ago. Um, and so we'll be adopting those changes into the updated land use, uh, I'm sorry, into the updated LCP, local coastal program. Um, those decisions are still several months out, um, assuming they can be made. Um, there's still you know, a lot of uncertainty with what that process looks like. Planning Commission hasn't even started reviewing the, the draft documents. And so we don't typically ask uh, that projects that come forward under our existing code wait until we adopt some future code uh, before the Planning Commission makes those decisions. And so we are asking you to make the decision based on um, the, the regulations that are on the books right now. Commissioner Figueroa has a question also. I was just wondering, um, are we gonna be able to comment after the applicant and the agent um, provide you know, their comments um, in respects to their overall project? Just have a just general question regarding that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we'll have deliberations, and if you need any more clarifications of staff, you'll have an opportunity for that too. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? You're not seeing any raised hands there, David? Uh, not at this point. Okay, so uh, we can move on to uh, the applicant's input on this project. Well, the any of anybody from the public can comment, but we will begin with the applicant and or their agent. Um, Chair, did you want to hear more about the interpretation that was going to be requested for, for the Planning Commission to make before they make a action on the, the project? Or do you feel like there's enough of that information in the staff report to uh, make a decision based on? Well, I definitely feel like, uh, you know, that's our bigger challenge here tonight, aside from any other concerns anybody has about the specifics of the project, um, I feel like it could come up in deliberations just as well. We can okay. backtrack and ask for clarification then. I appreciate that that Judith is pointing out that that's the sticky wicket here that we need to get through. But let's okay. hear from let's hear from the applicant or their agent. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, my, my name is Brian Little, and I, I appreciate the opportunity to address the Planning Commission about this important project. Um, I, I'm the director of Redwood Coast Montessori, a position I've held since 2012 when we first opened our, our K-8 program in Manila. Beginning three years ago, in response to interest in the community, we started a high school program that's currently located in the Westwood uh, market area of Arcata. And with this application, we're um, requesting to relocate that facility in the Westwood Market area to the 10 pin building on K Street. Um, the 10 pin building offers our program many advantages, including a much larger facility and a central location that will be a huge benefit to our students, our families, and the community. Um, Redwood Coast Montessori's commitment to building community is one of our founding principles, not just within the school, but within the larger neighborhood in which we all live. 
As we have done in Manila, we are always looking for ways to outreach to our neighbors, facilitate dialogue and communication, and strive to support the community. In Manila, we operate the, fam the Manila Family Resource Center, which provides a wide range of services to support individuals and families in need. And we host larger community events, such as our annual family Thanksgiving dinner and our winter holiday celebration for children. In Arcata, our high school program has also been actively involved in community outreach, assisting with food pantries, serving Arcata residents, and providing instruction to students from across the county through the Redwood Environmental Education Fair. With our proposed relocation to the 10 pin building, we hope to expand our connection to the community and to serve as a positive presence by collaborating with residents and local businesses in Arcata and in the Creamery District in particular. A few ways we plan to engage with the community include participation in Arch Arcata once it is safe to do so, obviously, supporting local businesses through collaboration on educational projects, internships, and apprenticeships, expanding our relationship with local programs such as the Arcata Playhouse, who we have been partnering with for the past eight years. We will build upon our commitment to the environment by participating in annual events such as the King Tide Project and by providing professional level student generated educational materials such as pamphlets and signage um, related to carbon footprint and, and, and making sure that we're trying to reduce our impact on the environment and provide these to the city of Arcata or other local government agencies that can use them for public education. We also hope to develop a community garden in the Creamery District by working with local businesses and residents to plan and develop this project. As I commonly tell prospective families first learning about our program, I'm very proud of the curriculum we offer and the academic opportunities we provide for our students. However, the most important thing we do as a program is build community. Building a community is of caring individuals that have com a commitment to and an understanding of how to communicate effectively and how to peacefully resolve issues as they arise is key to our success in working with students and in maintaining our role as a positive member in the larger community. The project outlined in our application to the Planning Commission has the support of Tom Parrott, the owner of the 10 pin building. It has support from the community, including key individuals in the Creamery District, and it has the support of the city planning staff. Allowing Redwood Coast Monastery to relocate, relocate its high school program to the 10 pin building will be a positive step for this commission and will be a distinct benefit to the Creamery District and to the residents of Arcata. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I think Kristen also had a few comments she was hoping to make. Thank you, Brian. Kristen? Go for it. I'm unmuted. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kristen. I'm a planner with Greenway Partners. And I'm also joined um, here by Kirk Cahoon. He's um, on his phone. Uh, he is the Greenway Partners CEO um, and also a major uh, team member for this project. So we have been working with Redwood Coast Montessori for a couple of years now to find a location for their high school campus. And we are very excited to be here today uh, to talk about this project. So thank you commissioners and staff for making this happen. At Greenway, we are really excited to be a part of this project. Our offices are actually just located down the street on 8th. And we're very excited to hopefully have RCM as a neighbor because this is such a positive use of an existing and underutilized building. So as described in your packet, we're only needing, and in Joe's uh, presentation, we're only needing to make some minor improvements to the site and building to make this project happen. These include uh, improving accessible entrances to the building, adding another ADA compliant parking stall, adding some bicycle and some motorcycle parking. Uh, this site is very well set up for traffic circulation in the area and for this use, make uh, the northern parking lot makes pickups and drop offs uh, very easy and safe for uh, students and staff and it has more than enough uh, parking based on the projected needs. Um, it has been also really encouraging to work with RCM and hear about the environmental education programs they already have put in place, and then also their dedication at this site to reducing greenhouse gas emissions from vehicles, um, as uh, noted in the travel demand policies in the packet. 
Um, interiorly uh, of the building, we're also working with our architect, Jason Brownfield, as well as um, some professional engineers. We have, um, we're working with some mechanical, electrical, and structural engineers to all create uh, classrooms and offices that are safe for students and staff and effective for learning. So overall, um, Brian's vision for the campus and RCM's project-based learning program with its emphasis in arts and education and artisanship make this a very ideal addition to the Creamery District um, and a very uh, a compliant use. So again, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and Brian, Kirk, and I are all available for uh, the rest of your meeting if you have any questions for us. Thank you, Kristen. Is there any other public comment on this project? And David, I guess I'm really asking you if you've received anything. I have a couple of items. Uh, is there anyone else on the project team that wishes to uh, present to the Planning Commission? Okay, I'm seeing none. Um, I did receive two, uh, two public comments, um, one from Sadie Mars. She writes, to whom it may concern, my name is Sadie Mars. I'm a current Mercator resident and my child has been a student at Redwood Coast Montessori High School for the past two years. She will continue as a student there through, throughout her high school career and until she graduates in 2024. RCM has been a huge support in both mine and my daughter's lives. I've lived in this area for the past six years as a single parent of child that suffers from PTSD as a result of childhood trauma, I am more than pleased to say that RCM has been trem a tremendous support, to say the least. The cur curriculum and the approach to learning that it's taken have been the perfect fit for my daughter. She struggles with other developed dis disorders such as provisional tic disorder, depression, anxiety, and ADD. Needless to say, there are many trials and tribulations that befall her due to these obstacles in her development and growth in all aspects of her life. The teachers and staff have helped in many ways as my child and I continue on our path to healing and success. We were homeless and living in a family shelter just a year and a half ago. Since then, the staff at RCM has helped us with so many needs, such as bus passes, food, and emotional academic support for my child. In my opinion, the new location on K Street in Arcata has many benefits. One reason is that it's closer to my home and my child will have an easier trek to school. Also, it will be a huge contribution to the community to have RCM be closer to the heart of the art community, closer to the opportunity for students to enjoy nature and the perfect addition to the neighborhood. RCM High School will have the opportunity for growth and the ability to interact with the community on many positive levels. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, and then one other from uh, Jennifer De Parma who writes, Dear Community Development Staff Members, I write this letter of support for the Redwood Coast Montessori School move to the 10 Pen Building in Arcata with full confidence that RCM will integrate well with the neighborhood and will greatly benefit the students and community. As a secretary to the superintendent at the Arcata School District, I've worked closely with Director Brian Little on a number of projects as our office handles their business services. Brian is impeccable, kind, thoughtful, and so dedicated to the school and its students. I read his monthly report to our board of directors. It's always so interesting. The students are very engaged and productive. Redwood Coast Montessori is a very impressive place where students learn to become active citizens. I have no doubt that numerous RCM students will eventually wind up working for the city of Arcata. Please consider my support when making your final decision tonight. Thank you. And it appears that that is uh, the sum total of new public comment that was not included in your packet tonight. Okay, thank you. So if the applicant uh, has no more comment at this point, then we'll close public comment. Any others from the application group? No? All right, we'll close public comment and move on to commission deliberations. Uh, and I'm wondering, Judith, if you want to open by um, proposing that question and discussing it with the commission here. Hey, um, yeah, the, the, the question is really, I, I think, um, partly a matter of timing. I, I do understand that we can only review the application based on our existing standards um, and that and that we need to decide 
which side of public private um, other use this particular one fits into based on what we actually have before us now. Um, because what we do here isn't just um, yes, no on a permit. Our mission also has to do with looking at our permits in the context of broader plans. Um, I, I, I kind of need to ask, how does this school actually um, work with them? It seems like the Creamery District um, is altogether a yes. Um, the local coastal program might be neutral and the Key Street um, specific plan, um, we have no idea where it's going except that this appears to be something other than industry along K Street. Um, but it certainly isn't something that we've been given to believe was going to be um, coming forward as part of those programs either. Um, so I, 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 I guess that discussing that limited set of things that we need to uh, approve, um, put off or not approve tonight um, could, could kind of limit that discussion, but I'd, I'd prefer to also consider those bigger issues. Um, one of them has to do with looking at a longer term designation for the site. Um, it, it does depend on really kind of considering two parcels together um, because in order to make that school work, um, it depends for, for um, drop off access on a parking lot, which is a different parcel. Um, we also have a school that involves more than just a high school. We have younger children involved in that same institution. And I guess while for high school students, I wouldn't imagine that there's you know, a safety issue involved in putting a school at that site. Um, you know, sh should younger children um, be present there? I, I think we're looking at a different set of transportation and safety issues. Um, and, you know, do we, do we know um, that those are not going to come up in the future? Um, and then as far as that, that other business designation goes, um, that, that seems to be a, a kind of a strange way to consider a, a quasi-public institution, I, I wish we could consider this project um, in the context of the plans that wouldn't make us, you know, call that distinction and um, possibly waiting a few months would, would, would do that. Um, it would, it would save a lot of jumping through uh, permitting hoops, it seems to me, um, if we did have this project to consider once we had our our um, plan concepts a little bit further along. So um, staff might be able to say a little bit more about how you envision that fitting in. Uh, other commissioners might have a few words. Um, I'm personally pretty comfortable calling it um, an other business for now, but I wouldn't be comfortable continuing on with that as our plans develop into the future um, because it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a cop out to to not have the ability to um, direct its take to this particular um, structure and use for safety and for um, other aspects of our plans. So um, I'd, I'd like to hear what other folks think. 
and take it from there. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Judith. Any other commissioners want to jump in? Davies has his hand up. Yeah, I appreciate um, everything you um, just raised, Judith. I, I, my first concern was certainly how does this project link up with the sort of K Street overall gateway kind of goals there? Um, given what uh, David said regarding our need to sort of review it through the lens of, of what's on the books right now. I, I appreciate the presentation both from Greenway and city staff. Um, I'm excited about this project myself. That building's been through a lot of different iterations over the years. And um, my personal view is that it's been sort of thoughtfully worked through and presented and it would be um, a, a net benefit to that uh, part of the city, um, notwithstanding the concerns you gave uh, or raised regarding um, some of the issues in that neighborhood. Thank you, Scott. Anybody else? Um, Commissioner Barstow. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm totally comfortable with this project, uh, what it is and where it is. In fact, uh, you know, in my opinion is that a school can go anywhere that there's uh, infrastructure to support it. Uh, I don't really have a problem with this location. Uh, you know, we could worry about uh, pedestrian safety and so on for the students, but, uh, you know, like many people, I grew up in a uh, big city and somehow survived, uh, uh, managed to avoid uh, uh, problems with traffic and so on. Um, so I'm, I'm in total support of this project. And, it, you know, there, it's, it's awkward to have to call this an other business, but if that's what we have to do, uh, we're kind of forced into that by the, the uh, uh, kind of lack of uh, uh, flexibility uh, uh, in in the way they uh, defined schools by you know by whether they're uh, private or or public. Um, and in fact, this is a public school, even though it's being uh, uh, administered by a uh, a nonprofit uh, uh, company. So um, it all looks good to me, and uh, that's about all I have to say about it. Commissioner White? Yeah, I just needed some clarification, and maybe I misread. My understanding was that it was designated for the high school so that we really wouldn't be having to worry about the younger children. That's I can let um, the applicant can maybe speak to that, but that's my understanding of that. Yes, it's a high school. Brian? Mr. Little, do you want to jump yeah, in? Yes, please. I'd be happy to weigh in. Yeah, no, it's absolutely a high school. We have a very well-established um, um, K-8 program in Manila. Um, we put a huge amount of work into that site, um, and, and that is designed to be an elementary campus. We built a $100,000 playground there. I mean, this is not going to accommodate a playground in it doesn't need one. It's it's designed to be a high school program. Thank you for that clarification. And then um, I really am excited about the interplay with the Creamery District, with the artisans, the playhouse, and seems like a perfect fit. I did have a question with regards to the permitting, and I'm still kind of a newbie. Maybe I should know this, but with regards to the other business designation, can we move forward for that? And then when we have completed the CLP or the, the um, coastal, um, when those amendments are made to change that to something maybe more fitting? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously it's, 
we don't have the, the local coastal program documents in front of you right now, but um, the way that the um, the way that we're trying to structure it currently is such that instead of designating the specific use types for very specific kinds of use categories, um, the use categories are lumped into much larger uh, buckets and those are designated as to whether or not a coastal development permit is required or not. And then the land use code will then fill in all of the, the detail. And so, you know, currently the way we're hoping to structure it uh, would dramatically change the way that uh, determinations are made about uh, specific land uses. And um, my hope is that that change would make it so that we don't have these challenges in the future where, um, you know, there's a time lag between the time when the city adopts an amendment and when the Coastal Commission certifies it. And during that time frame, you know, there are challenges in, in, in interpretation. Um, we hope to eliminate those those distinctions in the future. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else, Commissioner White? Okay, and then Commissioner Figueroa has uh, his hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to comment that I'm um, I'm definitely in. Um, I definitely approve this project and essentially, specifically, more how it's going to add more vibrance to this area. Um, particularly here in the Kirmini District and the K Street area, K Street Corridor. Um, you know, it's, um, I think it's, it would be a great location for potential um, high school uh, location. And I think it being just a high school will definitely eliminate a lot of the safety issues that have been brought up. Um, it, this is very interesting area as well with the overall, you know, how we, we have so much overlap between different planning ideas that we have with the K Street, the Creamier District, and then within the local coastal zone, um, and how that all interplays with one another um, with our future ideas for the community. Um, one thing I was interested about is um, how there is interpretation within our local coastal program and designating this site as a critical facility. Um, um, so designating this a critical facility based on our historic, on our, on our existing code, our existing um, coastal program, essentially make, is gonna potentially make it difficult for future improvements at this site if it's deemed a critical facility versus a non-critical facility. Um, I know, I know in our coastal program, we, you know, we dedicate this schools as critical facilities, but however, for instance, um, looking at Cal the California Geological Note 48, for instance, this is only addressed to public schools. And I don't understand this is a public school, but this is public school stating like, for instance, you know, the local elementary school that's held by the local school districts, um, which have greater funding capabilities can get grants and all this stuff for improvements. Um, however, anything greater than $50,000 as of 1980 monies for improvements at this site may require detailed site investigations that are gonna have to meet um, present day codes for those improvements. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out um, is there, you know, is there a reason, you know, other than within what's in our certified local coastal program documentation, why we are calling this a critical facility? Um, because if it is a critical facility, it needs to be to code, to, you know, being a critical facility. And if for any future development, any future improvements there, they have to be at that standard. So I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what is the impetus for this from our, from our staff for this for this um, uh, determination and, and this interpretation. Joe, jo, you're muted. You did. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. The critical facilities is just, uh, there's a, in the Coastal Land Use and Development Guide, it has a list of critical facilities. Tunnels is a critical facility. And in this case, uh, it, schools appears as a critical facility. And so it's this land use activity that occurs. I think that uh, 
Um, if the school decided not to operate there, they need a bigger site, they're so successful, they want to move on, that um, you know, whatever land use activity is going to be there, it could easily be converted back to a um, office industrial use or maybe housing, something like that. So um, our critical facilities is just the a factor of it being codified that way in our land, our coastal land use and development guide. Um, there are some provisions that you know would allow us to, like you say, have the exemption for um, not having to go through the rigorous process of a, a soils report. But um, you know that's something that we've kind of we built in the condition of approval to have that flexibility to uh, allow us to evaluate that with the building official, with the, the applicant itself, maybe the Office of Education, and really determine are these standards uh, really applicable to this, this site or not? Um, I think one of the thing, key things to figure is that, you know, this is a place where our children are going and it is usually those high occupancy areas and risk factors that would create a critical facility. Uh, a theater is also a critical facility as well. So it's that high occupation area with a lot of occupants. In this case, I think it's the sensitive nature of uh, having our children go there. Okay. What is, uh, you know, from, from I guess, from the applicant or, for, or from their agents, what is the state of the structure right now in regards of its integrity? Great question. Thank you. So this is Kurt Cahoon, and I'm the project manager for this project and many others. Um, uh, yeah, great question. I appreciate your comments, Commissioner Figueroa. It kind of sums up our primary concerns about this language ending up in the conditions of approval. Um, especially since there's a lot of variability about what is intended to comply with critical facilities designation related to geological uh, code. Mm -hmm. So um, to answer your primary question at this time, we've done a couple of coring samples of the structure. Um, initially, we found some initial thoughts around um, concern that some of the spots weren't showing as much concrete as possible. And as it turns out, the structure itself, we corded again yesterday with the structural engineer, Julie's husband, Stan, who is a civil engineer, structural engineer. Um, and the concrete that is inside the structure, the post columns, is bearing almost the entire load of the structure. So the structure's got a ton of integrity structurally. Um, when we cut in windows, we're gonna add frame, structural frame, and potentially some tie downs to exceed the condition that exists now and also make it more compliant with the concerns related to the geologic um, area. But I think the building department is going to really drive the compliance requirements. Right. Um, but the structure itself good, does have good integrity, is in good shape. Um, Mr. Parrott's kept it in good condition. And so the initial findings were, um, you know, what it turns out is the CMU block is the structure. The, uh, a lot of that block is infilled between structural columns and posts. So as it turns out, the CMU block is essentially there for a flat wall. It's all grouted together. Um, but like I said, initially, we were a little concerned that we weren't finding deep columns full of concrete. And then we got into the post columns and they are fully structured, uh, compliant with code. And we will, of course, make the modifications necessary to stay compliant with the building code. Um, one of the points I would make is the, the uh, designation as a critical facility in the city's code. It's, you know, schools, theaters, highways, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but charter schools isn't listed in there and it wasn't part of the nomenclature at the time when the city's code was developed but expressly stated in the california charter schools act um, when it passed was that charter schools are places where freedom from some of the constraints around development standards as you just suggested are driven by the really high cost of developing charter uh, school facilities and charter schools don't come with the funding base that supports expansion and growth and payment for facilities and uh, significant expenses so a lot of charter schools have found ways to get themselves into old shopping centers, old churches. Uh, Joe and I were speaking this afternoon about, um, what is it, North Coast Preparatory Academy NPA that had a similar situation and had to go through some compliance issues. And so what you're suggesting is a pretty common concern in the charter school world. How do we, how do we make facilities compliant without calling them essential or critical facilities, especially since there's no money to do that? Um, the critical facilities designation at the state level would typically for a school require division of state architects, California geologic service, and a ton of code updates for seismic and structural. Um, that doesn't mean that this structure is more safe at the end of the day uh, than this one would be for a commercial use or a school use, 
it's just a code variance. Um, and so I just, I appreciate you bringing that up and asking that question. It's one of our concerns is that the language may be passed directly to the building official who may interpret a essential code in a, uh, you know, a facility of this type. And since the language is very vague in the code, he may come to a very strict standard and uphold an essential facilities designation per the state code, which would kill the budget of our client and make this project untenable financially. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm glad to hear from Joe that there's opportunity for exemption from this because, yeah, this it would be incredibly costly to you guys to do any sorts of improvements to get to that level of uh, infrastructure. So. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for your feedback. Other questions out there or comments? Or a motion? Uh, I'll take the opportunity to weigh in. I think it's a great project. Um, I think that building's never looked nicer, not even in its glory days as a bowling alley. Um, and it feels like um, a, a happy location for this program, you know, with the Creamery District. And the other thing about the other businesses category is that, as we're aware, the intention of creating the Creamery District um, was included schools. There's a desire for school locations to be there. And here we are stuck in this one corner where it's in the coastal zone and so there's other agency overlays that seem more like, as Kurt said, uh, nomenclature than um, the real intention. So I'm comfortable in that respect with making the designation of other businesses and uh, just moving on with this. So if there are no other comments or questions, then we're looking for a a motion. Um, and just to prime the pump there, the, uh, the motion would be to um, approve the project, uh, adopting the action with condition findings and conditions of approval, uh, which include a class one section 15301 existing facility CEQA exemption. Judith, are you about to speak? You look like you're unmuted. Uh, yeah, I will so move um, as um, as presented. As, right, as presented, yes. Okay. Okay. We have a motion. I'd like to second. We have a motion and a second. Okay, um, and I'll do a roll call. Uh, Vice Chair Mayor. Vote to approve. Uh, Commissioner Davies. Vote to approve. Commissioner Figueroa. Vote to approve. And uh, Commissioner Barstow. Approve. Commissioner White. Approve. And uh, Chair Tagney. Approve. Motion passes. So motion carries. Congratulations to the applicant and the agents and uh, to Mr. Little. Should be a great project. We look forward to seeing it. If I can quickly chime in, thank you so much. And and I, I look forward to having you all come and visit uh, again, especially once things open up a little bit, uh, hopefully uh, for past COVID a bit. But uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and energy. Okay. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Um, so I have uh, contacted uh, Commissioner Bessade Elcock, and she'll be rejoining us before we move on to our next item. So we just have a little pause here. Please, she's joining now. Okay. We're all together.
Okay, so um, we're moving on to all we have now is business items, right? That's correct. Okay, David, take it away. Uh, okay, so the uh, annually in July, first meeting in July, the Planning Commission is to elect its chair and vice chair pursuant to the municipal code. Um, the way this typically happens for uh, those of us who don't remember from last year or who happen to be new for this year uh, is that we take it in turns to have the chair uh, nominated uh, by one of the uh, group. And then um, if that nomination uh, is seconded, uh, then there's a vote uh, to determine the, the, whether that nomination passes. And then we move on to the vice chair um, next. Um, currently, uh, Commissioner Tagney is the chair and Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair Mayor is the, uh, the vice chair. And so um, I will turn it over to you and support in any way I can, but uh, a motion to nominate and a second is all we need to move this item forward. Um, I just want to throw out that if anybody has any interest in uh, acting as chair or vice chair, please speak up. It's, uh, there's no attachment for this role. So. Don't be shy. Uh, Commissioner Mayor? Yeah, I actually like to nominate um, Chair Daniel Tangney to continue in that role for the coming term. I'll second that. Okay, so uh, Mr. Lawyer, uh, do we need to do a roll call vote on that? Um, you might want to ask for uh, deliberations first, and if done, then, then we can do the voice call, uh, roll call. All right. Deliberations on that last chance, if anybody else would like to be chair, please. Otherwise, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Vice Chair Mayor? Yeah, I... I just wanted to mention, I think that um, Chair Pengi has been doing a great job and I would love to see him continue in that role. But before uh, we vote, I'd love to uh, maybe hear from him uh, if he's willing to continue to serve as chair. Uh, thank you, Judith. And yeah, absolutely. I'm fine with this role. I just uh, really want to share it with anybody else that wants to pursue it. and. If not this round, please um, let one of us know before we do this again next July. Okay. Okay. Um, looks like uh, no other comments. We'll go ahead and start with a uh, uh, roll call. Uh, Commissioner uh, Vasade Elcock? Yes. Commissioner Davies? Yes. Commissioner Figueroa? Yes. Commissioner White? Commissioner, uh, and I'll note for the record, that was a yes. We kind of caught you in between mutes. Uh, Commissioner Barstow? Yes. And Vice Chair Mayor? Yes. And Chair Tagney? Yes. Okay. All right, now we need a nomination for Vice Mayor. Um, would, is, any deliberations, any comments, any? Otherwise, we'll look for a motion. As someone new to the commission, I appreciate um, the comments that and thoughts that Judith brings to us. So I would certainly um, personally be happy to see her continue as vice chair. Commissioner Barstow had some comments. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I'll just second that uh, nomination. Great, we have a motion and a second. And uh, if there's uh, any other deliberations, we can do that. If not, we'll move on to roll call. Okay, seeing none, uh, Commissioner uh, Vasid Elka? <laughs> For the record, that's a yes. Uh, yes, Commissioner? That's yes. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Davies? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Figueroa? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Barstow? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Mayor? Uh, yeah, I guess you stuck with me. 
Yeah, we and that. Ask and share tag me. Yes. Okay. Thank Motion you. Passes. <laughs> All right, and um, we'll do this again next July. So, uh, Mr. Loya, you had one more business item on your list, right? Yeah, last last item on the list is whether or not, and I know we're kind of like almost at the end of the summer here, but it's the first opportunity we've had to discuss summer schedules. Um, are there any uh, vacations planned that it would be convenient to cancel a planning commission meeting now uh, so that um, we don't rack up uh, absences? Uh, or is everyone planning on being here through uh, July, August, September? I'm going to be gone for three weeks in August, but I plan to be available remotely uh, while I travel. Anybody else? That's a great advantage of uh, teleconferencing, huh? I have no plans. Anybody? I'll be here sheltering in place. And wherever there's internet access, there's Zoom, so I can do it from wherever. Okay, well, we won't cancel uh, any planning commission meetings on account of summer schedules, um, but there may be a couple of cancellations due to gaps in projects, uh, but we'll try and uh, keep keep them um, light, sp spicy and brief. Okay, so that's it for your business items? Yes. All right, so correspondence and communications. Does anybody have anything to share? No? Nope. Okay, seeing none, we are ready to adjourn. Thank you all.